All right, we will continue on with Mississippi State head coach Joe Moorhead. Coach, we'll ask you to give us a brief opening comment, and then we'll open it for Q&A. Again, as a reminder, if you'll raise your hand, we'll get you a microphone for questions. No, I'm you know, very excited to be here. Certainly uh, a little bit different than Patriot League Media Day three years ago at Green Pond Country Club in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, <laughs> in scope and stature. I uh, appreciate the coverage you all provide to our team and to our conference. I think that's something that makes it special, not just the players, not just the coaches, um, but um, how important it is to everybody following the teams. So very excited to be here, and I'll take any questions that you have. We'll go down here on the front row to the right. I know you've been asked a million times about the difference between the North and the South, so I'm going to ask you, what's the biggest difference between the Big Ten and the SEC? Uh, I think that's yet to be determined because I haven't gone through a season here yet. But, um, you know, certainly when you're talking about that level of football, you know, we're, you know, recruiting and playing with the best of the best in the country and, you know, teams from the, you know, Big Ten and the SEC, you know, invariably end up in the college football playoff. You know, I think it's really kind of out of the frying pan and into the fire that uh, I think it's, you know, was a great proving ground and certainly, you know, my time and experience in the Big Ten will be one that, uh, has prepared me well for the rigors of the, of the SEC. Go to the left side on the back row on the aisle. What's it like to uh, get to know a new group of players? Obviously, you've made other stops along the way, but to, uh, to get, get to know these players, get to know about them as people, what's that been like since you arrived in Starkville? I think that's been the most exciting part about uh, leaving the assistant coach and chair at Penn State and getting back into a role as a head coach as I was uh, at Fordham University, where you're, you're inheriting a group of guys who had been with a certain coach for, a, for an extended period of time. And you're bringing in the new staff, new ideas, a new culture, new schemes. And uh, you know, certainly trying to uh, you know, earn the player's respect, because I don't think that's something that could be given. I think it's something that needs to be earned. And I think as the days progress since the time we've been there until now, that the players are really embr embracing our idea that, uh, you know, that our culture is what's going to be the thing that differentiates us. You know, discipline, accountability, work ethic, attention to detail, and selflessness. So I think that's, you know, a very neat thing as a head coach where, you know, as an assistant, you're responsible for your position, you're responsible for your side of the ball as a coordinator. But as a head coach, you're able to um, kind of be able to be a part of every facet of the program. We'll go over to the left side, standing in the back. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Great. How are you doing? I'm good. Rachel Barbo, Sirius oh, XM, oh, yeah, ESPNU. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot has been made about your defensive line, and, and so much is, uh, is line of scrimmage plays, trench play. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious about your offensive and defensive lines, what you've seen in spring, and does that, that excite you for the fall? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I was joking around a little bit earlier with my history as an offensive coach and a play caller with this defense. I may switch over and call the defense this year. Uh, but no, certainly when you look at guys like Montez and Jeffrey, and you know, we, we're not just two deep, but in some places three deep on our defensive line. And Coach Baker does an unbelievable job with those guys. And uh, when you have an out, uh, a unit like that that can stop the run and pressure the passer, it alleviates some of the stress on, on the back end. Uh, so, you know, very, very excited about our defense. and. You know, you look at our, our offensive line, and Mississippi State's had a, a history of running the ball successfully. And with our offensive scheme, you know, we operate at our best when we're running the ball well, because I think that opens up things in the past game. And Coach Marcus Johnson's doing a great job with the O-line. And, and much like our defensive line, big, fast, physical, aggressive. And to, and to watch those two units go against each other in practice, you know, I really think it's preparing us for what we're going to see on a weekly basis in the SEC. <clears throat> Uh, this is this is not a. I mean, we strive to be 50-50, and, and, and if you go back to probably not when I was at, at UConn, we were a lot more run heavy there. But from my time at Fordham until now, we've we've been just about. You know, we've never been higher than 55% one way or the other, okay. and I think uh, you know where we gravitate towards will be what we do better. But but I, I think we have to run the ball well in order to uh, force people to commit numbers to the box by by support or by pressure. And when we do that, it, it creates one-on-one -on -one matchups on the back end. And I think from the past two years, you've seen our willingness and ability, you know, kind of to exploit those one-on-one -on -one matchups. We'll go over the right side on the back <clears throat> row, right in the middle. Coach, you're inheriting one of the, arguably one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC, and Nick Fitzgerald. What's how's the transition easier with a quarterback that's experienced like him? No, it, it makes it uh, easier in the sense that he he's been through it. You know, he's he, it's not a guy where you're coming in and. He had, particularly in this conference where he's battle tested and with our offense and the uh, level of autonomy and decision making that's required of the quarterback position, 
you know, we want in our system a guy that can beat you with his brains, beat you with his legs, and beat you with his arms. And I think Nick combines that total package. And when you add decision making to that, and, and how, I, how I believe he's going to improve as a passer in our system, you know, he's certainly a guy that you know, we're placing high expectations on for the season. And I think he has those for himself. So I think you're going to see his best season yet. Go over to the left side on the front row, all the way to the end. You've got a pretty established track record of developing offensive skill players. <coughs> um, has that maybe been of a heightened focus, given you know some of the other position groups are a little more um, proven? I think it's probably been a bit more of a focus relative to our development of the pass game and, and our reliance on that to be successful, particularly as it pertains to explosive plays. And I think probably the question that you're asking is us being a little bit more unproven at the wide receiver position. And I think that's something where you know, we had a group of guys there, and we're looking for, for, you know, a couple to separate themselves from the pack. And I think they all had a, a very good spring. But as we head into fall camp, and now it's just not knowing what to do, but the hows and the whys, and, and looking for a couple guys out of that group to really step up and separate themselves. Because I, I think the talent is there. You know, we just need to continue to coach them. And Coach Getzi's doing a, an excellent job there, and you know, give them an opportunity to make plays. Go to the camera platform right in the middle. Coach, you're entering a division with some pretty heavy hitters, the SEC West. Do you have any preconceived notions of the SEC West specifically, and what do you think you need to do to be successful in the SEC in general? No, I, I think certainly you look at it uh, from, from a quantifiable objective measure that the two teams that played in the national championship were an, an SEC West team and an SEC East team. So certainly until somebody's capable of you know, knocking, about, knocking Alabama off, you know, they're, they're the uh, standard bearer, and not just Alabama, but you go down to the SEC West on, on a weekly basis and even our crossover games that, uh, you know, much like the Big Ten and, and talk about out there a little bit, that the margin of error is razor thin. And, you know, at Penn State last year, we were four points away from being undefeated. You know, lost to Ohio State by one and lost to Michigan State by three. And, and in a conference like this, you know, you have to be on top of it every single week if you want to have an opportunity you know, to be back in Atlanta in December and certainly continuing your season uh, beyond that. Go over here to the left side on the back row, all the way to the left. Hey, Joe, over here. Oh, here you go. <laughs> as, a, uh, as a distant outsider up in the Northeast, what was your understanding of the identity of Mississippi State while you were at other jobs? And then just also, could you update us on your search for some legitimate Italian food in the South? <laughs> the, uh, you know, the perception of Mississippi State, you know, you kind of, you know, unfortunately, during the course of the season, you're, you're, you're so myopic in the sense that you're focused on, you know, your job and what your team's doing. You really don't get to watch a bunch of football, but outside of your conference or on TV for that matter. But, you know, Mississippi State, you know, is a team that, you know, Coach Mullen did an excellent job developing the foundation, a team that was uh, hung its hat on its physicality on both sides of the ball and ability to run the ball. And really, what, what, Myself and my staff and this team, what we're looking to do is kind of shed that underdog role where you come into a day like this and Mississippi State is picked fifth or sixth and then they end up fourth and you know people are fired up about it. I want to elevate this program from uh, good to great so when we come into days like this, you know, people are talking about Mississippi State as a legitimate contender for the conference championship. And um, you know, those are things that you know, on a daily basis our kids understand that we're, we're operating at a championship standard. Go to the camera platform, far right in hey, the back. Hey, Joe, going off of that, you know, when you first came to Starkville, you'd mentioned that you don't want your oh, players. Oh, excuse me for one second. Um, new Italian restaurant opening, uh, Gondolier. That's, that'll be a good one in Starkville. So <laughs> schedule to hit that tonight with the family. A very important answer to the very important question. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to interrupt. No, no worries. Um, so going off of what you were just talking about, um, when you came to Starkville, you wanted your players to not be afraid to talk about conference championships and national championships as their goals. You know, do you like having that expect? You know, obviously high expectations this year for this team, but do you want your teams to embrace those expectations every year? Absolutely, I want us to talk about it, and I think that's part of the attraction. And you know, I think you know, Mr. Cohen, you know, brought me here is to elevate the program from good to great. And, and if you know, you're not talking about it, and, and if attitude truly reflects leadership. You know, it's got to come from the top. So from myself, from our coordinators, from our assistant coaches, you know, I, I want our kids to believe that, you know, the three things that I think are necessary to win a championship, and I've been fortunate enough at the last four places I've been to win a conference championship, are talent, coaching, and culture. And I believe we have the requisite talent on our team to compete on a, on a weekly basis in this conference. 
I believe we put a coaching staff in position that are experts at fundamentals and technique that can motivate our guys and can, can put them in a position to be successful with our scheme. And lastly, I think the most important part is the cultural aspect that, uh, you know, we got to do the little things better. And, and, you know, you talk about someone in our conference, you hear Coach Saban talk about the process and doing all those little things on a weekly basis where you make the investment and earn the right. And I think that's what we've got to do. And, you know, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, we talk about championships and we want to win the SEC and we don't get there. Well, we haven't had a winning record in the SEC one time in the last 15 years. You know, we don't have the Egg Bowl trophy. And if we have a season that's uh, reflective of what it's been in the recent and past history, then we're going to be competitive and go to a good bowl game. But uh, I don't think there's any harm in us talking about wanting to and our capability to win a championship, or else I shouldn't be here. I should have stayed at Penn State. Go back here on the left side, standing. Coach, what are your – right here. I, oh, yeah, here you go. Sorry. Coach, what are your expectations Dir for – Directionally you, challenged. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> what are your expectations for defensive tackle Jafari Simmons coming into the season? He's got a lot of attention uh, as possible Outland, tr Outland Trophy candidate. And uh, what are your expectations for your defensive line as a whole? Our defensive line as a whole, uh, uh, a term that you use when you're scouting uh, other teams as you refer to them as game wreckers, that guys can single-handedly take a game over. And you kind of highlight those guys when, when, you're, when you're at the beginning of the week and, and talking about it. And I think, you know, Jeffrey and Montez and a couple other guys on our, on our defensive line have the capability to single-handedly wreck a game for the opposition. And, uh, you know, I, you know, just to reiterate the, the job that Coach Baker does with those guys, 19 years of professional experience. And, uh, you know, we're certainly, you know, excited to, to have players of their caliber that, that, once again, not to be redundant, but in a line of scrimmage football league, to really give you an opportunity to be special. Over here on the right side, front row. When I look at the defense, the cornerback position is the one where I don't feel like I could pencil, I could pencil in a starter. Right. Uh, how do you feel about the guys you have competing for that spot? You know, we, we have a group of guys right now that I think we feel very solid about, and uh, kind of like the receiver position, probably with a little bit more experience and a little bit more production. You know, Cam Dancer's a young guy who did a lot of good things during spring ball. You know, Chris Rayford's an older guy that's, that's had some experience. And certainly Jamal Peters, a six foot plus guy, right around 200 pounds, you know, that, that's you know, very fast and very physical. And, you know, some younger guys behind them. So, uh, and then it, you feel a little bit better at the safety spot just in terms of the experience level with, with uh, Mark and with Jonathan Abram. So I think what we have is a, uh, you know, a couple of guys who are fighting for the spot who have some game experience and a lot of talent. And then behind them, some younger guys that we're looking to develop to kind of fill in the two deep. Go over here on the left side in the back, standing. Hey, Coach. Um, so this is a non-football question. Yeah. So you come to the South. When was like the first time somebody said something, ate something, suggested something where you thought to yourself internally, what did they just say? Like, what did they just offer me? Like, this is nuts, these Southern people. Yeah, I, I you know, as a, a graduate of Fordham University and being an English major, it, it, what I feel is a somewhat uh, reputable <laughs> academic institution, I found that you know, the, the language was the thing that stuck out to me, the, that a group of people is you guys, and here it's y'all. It's not, and it's, if it's three or more, it's all y'all, all right? And then you're not going to, you're fixing to do something. So the language was the first thing. And then certainly the willingness and ability to fry anything and wrap it in bacon from a food standpoint uh, has been something that's really stood out to me in a positive manner. So, and, and, the, and the humidity, that, that'll get you too. Yeah. Go over here to the right side on the back row, right on the aisle. Hey, Coach, a couple of quick questions for you. Yes, uh, Mark Hutsmith, the addition to your staff, what does he bring to your, uh, to your staff? Uh, you know, in the, in the co uh, composition of our assistant coaching staff, uh, we made a concerted effort to have a mix of guys from the north, a mix of guys from the south, a mix of guys who had experience recruiting different areas because we want to recruit nationally. And certainly what Mark brings to the table, uh, native of Louisville, Mississippi, which is relatively a half hour from our campus, uh, had coached at Mississippi State before, had coached in the SEC, and certainly his coach, head coaching experience, uh, ULL, you know, all those things combined made him a very uh, kind of a no-brainer to bring into the staff, and he's done a phenomenal job for us. And what role has uh, Thrill Will Martin done getting you ready for the season here? B Bill Martin? Yeah. Oh, he's the best in the business. He's my boss. I follow him around. He tells me what to do. Keeps me on track. We'll go right over here on the second row. Coach, uh, two of the toughest uh, teams on your conference schedule this year, arguably, are going to be the Alabama schools, yep. uh, Auburn and Alabama. What do you feel like is the key uh, for your team to go in there and get those victories? T 
to be honest with you, those games are so far down the road right now. In, in my context of viewing them has been the games from last year. So and not to sound cliche, but I'll be cliche. You know, our, our focus is on Stephen. Well, our, actually, our focus is on camp on what we need to do to mow our own grass and make sure that we understand what we're doing in all three phases. And then from there, we'll carry it on to, to um, you know, Stephen F. Austin for our first game. But I think the biggest thing for us to have the opportunity to compete against teams of, you know, Alabama and Auburn's caliber is to not worry about who we're playing, but to worry about what we compete against. So, you know, the term that we use, championship standard, that, that we don't compete against an opponent, we compete against a standard. And it's not like you say, well, we're playing Alabama this week, so we really have to ramp up how well we prepare and how hard we play. Or are we playing this team this week? We necessarily don't have to, you know, go as hard. That if, if we kind of, you know, draw that line in the sand and say, hey, this is what we need to do to be the best team that we can be to give us an opportunity to compete on a weekly basis, uh, we take care of the little things and we continue to progress mentally and physically. And, and certainly in those games, you can't beat yourself. And you know, one of our goals in spring ball and something we focused on and we're going to continue to do in camp is dominating situational football, you know, specifically as it pertains to explosive play margin and turnover margin. And I think in games of that, where five or six plays may determine the outcome, you have to win the explosive play battle and you have to win the turnover battle. That will give us a chance to compete against teams of that caliber. We'll go standing all the way over here to the left. Uh, hey, Coach, uh, Bruce Marshall, Sports Byline USA. Another uh, schedule question. Um, no disrespect to uh, Steve Duff Austin and Coach Conk, uh, but you've got several weeks to uh, prepare here, and the schedule, Kansas State, that might be the biggest game in the country in week two. They're open with South Dakota on their side, but are you going to do anything a little extra to get ready for Kansas State as you ramp up to the opener? Uh, there may be a few things during the course of fall camp uh, where we get to the tail end of it, where we have a, a period or two where we concentrate on you know, our first or second opponent. But uh, you know, as I mentioned before, we have so many things to clean up on our end you know, and teach our scheme to our guys and make sure they understand it. And uh, you know, talk about the three things for us to be successful on a weekly basis. We hang our hat on preparation, you know, effort and execution, how well we prepare Sunday to Friday, how hard we play on every given play. And then the last one is the most important, the execution aspect of it and the precision and the attention to detail. And against a team, you know, like Kansas State and Coach Snyder being a legend and an icon, you know, they're a team that does the little things right. They don't beat themselves. So we really got to go into that game and understand their style of offense, that they limit possessions, that they play very, you know, physical, fundamentally sound defense. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, going out there, 11.30 kickoff, that's going to be a huge challenge in week two. One we look forward to, though. We'll go over here right down the middle on the left side on the aisle. Coach, back to your staff, uh, really looks like there's an impressive amount of NFL experience yeah. uh, with Terrell Buckley. What's it like to have a player with his accomplishments on the staff as well as what's it like to work with Larry Coyer? <laughs> uh, you know, Coach Coyer, actually, I, I, I ga for him at the University of Pittsburgh. That was actually my second year in coaching. So, you know, being an offensive guy your whole life, being a quarterback and being on that side of the ball, you think you understand what's happening on the other side until you have an, a chance to coach on that side of the ball. So. You know, the things I learned from Coach and for him to be able to come in here in, a, in an analyst role and, and kind of, you know, share his 40 years worth of experience, you know, being a coordinator at a bunch of different uh, major college football programs and coordinating in the NFL and, and being in the Super Bowl, I think that's something where Coach Shoup, you know, can really glean a lot of information from Coach uh, from a uh, schematic standpoint and then having guys like Coach Buckley who've done it at the highest level in college in the NFL and, you know, Coach Getze who I coached at Akron, he, you know, had a cup of coffee with the Niners, so he's a guy that's got a little bit of pro experience. And Marcus Johnson, coaching our O line, you know, played six years for the Vikings. So anytime, you know, what I think it does, it, it validates it to the kids that you know you don't necessarily have to have played at the college level or pro level, you know, to be a successful coach. But I think that's something that certainly helps. We'll go over here to the left side on the back row. Sir, good morning, coach. Good morning, uh, coach. What areas would you like to see improvement from Nick Fitzgerald? Nick Fitzgerald. I, I would say. Uh, you know, the thing that we've kind of, you know, earmarked to see the uh, highest level of, of improvement and in, in progression, you know, is his development as a passer and his completion percentage. You know, Nick's, you know, right around a 55% career completion percentage guy and kind of our standard in this offensive system going back is, you know, the 65% mark. So, you know, you know, Nick, you know, reading, getting pre-snap tips, getting post-snap confirmation, the ability to read coverages and not just know where to go with the ball, but why, 
and not just doing that, but doing it on proper footwork with good mechanics. I think, you know, develop, developing him as a, a uh, kind of drop back and play action down the field passer and improving his understanding.